What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful, smoky, crispy, saucy, delicious smoked chicken wings. Coming up! Chicken wings, definitely one of my favorite things to cook. They're cheap, readily available, and because of the skin to meat to fat ratio, you can get a really crispy skin while maintaining some nice, tender, juicy meat. They're also great with any flavor profile, whether it's sweet, spicy, savory, you can't lose. But most importantly, you can cook them on whatever you have, whether it's in the oven, in a deep fryer, on the grill. But with all that said, today I'm gonna show you how I like to make wings on the offset smoker, and it is going to be delicious. Lou, what are you doing? Save that for later. This is a chicken. If you've never taken a wing off of a chicken before, it's super easy to do. I don't really need to show you this, but I happen to have a chicken handy, so I might as well. Simply enough, you just wanna grab it right by the wing here and right in this joint, spine side up, go right on in and slice it off. Not much to it. And the beauty of taking wings off a chicken yourself is that if you wanted to, you could kind of go a little into the breast and get yourself a big old chicken wing. Have a little extra meat on there. If you're doing fried chicken, that's a good tip. That way your wing is a little more evenly sized with the rest of your fried chicken pieces. But that being said, that's how you take a chicken wing off. From here, you could cook them whole. I like to do that a lot. It works really well in the smoker. It's all about presentation and cook time and that kind of stuff. But to break them apart, you simply want to find this joint. Go right through there. Same on this side, right through there. Then you've got your chicken drum, your chicken flat, and your wing tip. Some people like to eat the wing tips. I usually don't. They're great for making stock. If you save these up, keep them in your freezer, they're all collagen and skin and fat, which is perfect for flavoring a stock, making it nice and gelatinous and thick. But as I mentioned, chicken wings are readily available. And whenever I buy them, I always get the full wings, just like we just had. And that's for a few different reasons. First and foremost, you're gonna save some money by breaking them down yourself, because if you're not breaking them down, you're gonna be paying some other guy to do it. Also, I kinda like doing it. It's pretty fun, good practice. And like I said, you get all those wing tips, which are great for making stock, which I highly recommend you all start doing. Because having homemade stock around comes in handy more often than you'd think. Another good reason to get the full wings and break them down yourself is because the quality is gonna be a lot better. I bought a package of pre-cut wings the other day and half of the bones were broken because when they're breaking these down in the factories, they're typically moving pretty quick and they might miss or they might get overhandled or something. And you're gonna have a lot of split bones which is gonna leak out marrow and stuff into your oil, give you some off flavors, off colors, that kind of thing. But again, there's nothing to it. Just find the joint, use a nice sharp, Chef's knife, something that's got a little bit of heft to it, nothing too delicate because you're going through some cartilage. And if you've never done this before and you're having a hard time finding the joint, you can always just go through and split the skin down and then snap it to expose the joint. You can see it right there and then just follow right through. Same on the wing tip here, just kind of break it till you see exactly what you're doing and go right through. But once you get the hang of it, you can just kind of eyeball it and get through a whole bag of wings pretty quickly. And then we have a big beautiful pile of wings. Time to fire up the smoker. In my boot, there is a snake. Nice and toasty. If you have the foresight to plan ahead, I highly recommend utilizing a dry brine for chicken wings. Salting your chicken wings skin side up on a rack and letting sit uncovered in the fridge overnight will not only help season the wings all the way through, but it will also help dry out the skin, which is really what we're after for getting crispy skin on the smoker. These are some wings I seasoned last night and the skin is nice and dry on there and should help crisp up very nicely. That being said, I rarely plan that far ahead. So today we're gonna throw these dry brined wings on as well as just these ones that I just chopped up. For these wings that have already been salted overnight, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of black pepper and just toss them around. Make sure they're covered on every side. And it's at this point too, you could go in with any rub or any other seasonings you like, but today I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. For the rest of these wings, I'm just gonna go in with a bit of salt, 
You don't have to be too precise with this because most of the sauces that you're going to toss your wings in afterwards are going to be pretty flavorful and salty, but this is just a good head start. Go in there, make sure they're nice and salty, as well as some black pepper. And now, onto the pit they go. As for temperature on this pit, we are rocking a solid 300, may even bump that up a little bit to 325. You're gonna put these nice and close, but not too close that they're gonna burn. But we're trying to cook these really hot and fast. And I always try to put them skin side up, which is kind of hard to do because they're covered in skin, but for a flat here, we're gonna do skin side up as opposed to the bone side, as I like to refer to them. And that's just so the top gets nice and crispy. These are the dry rind wings going up front. And again, this is a great time to use your favorite barbecue rub. Some chud rub would be great. I use that often. Any flavor profile you want. Like I said, if you've got a sweet rub, that can be pretty tasty. The sugars will caramelize on the wings. But I'm going for some crispy wings that we can then toss and sauce later. So keeping the seasoning pretty simple. This is also a great way to test out your smoker. If you have a new pit or you're unfamiliar with how your hot spots work or how evenly the smoker cooks, just fill it up with chicken wings and you'll easily be able to see which ones are getting crispy first. And it's a good way to get to know your smoker without you know, cooking a bunch of biscuits or something because these are gonna be tasty no matter how you cook them. One final step I like to do when cooking chicken wings is wait till this stage to go through with some garlic powder. This way we're gonna have a nice even coating right on top. It's gonna cook into the chicken fat that starts rendering out and get really nice and golden. It's gonna roast really well. And it's just gonna help with the presentation. Go through at this point too and just do a little more black pepper, just a nice finishing coat for flavor and presentation. A lot of times too, I'll throw in some paprika or something into the bowl, give these a nice reddish tint. <laughs> Very nice. All right, now we are gonna let these go for the next little bit. From here on out, we're gonna let these rock at around 325, maybe up, oh, maybe upwards of 300 degrees. And we're going for doors wide open, damper wide open, really clean convective heat. Basically the same principle of how an air fryer works. A lot of people will smoke them really low or really smoky. And that's how you get those dark rubbery wings that are no bueno. So I'm gonna throw another log on and we'll come back in about 30, 45 minutes. Definitely a good time to pick through your wood pile to make sure you have some really nice seasoned logs, nothing too dense or round that's gonna smolder and put out a bunch of thick smoke. And just like the Thanksgiving turkey or the smoked chicken we did a few months back, we're not really going with any fancy flavors or rubs or anything like that. We're just trying to focus on the basics, burning a really clean fire and aiming for that wonderful crispy skin. Nice and toasty. Because we're cooking so close to the exchange in there, I pulled my fire pretty far back. That way those flames are reaching all the way in without anything getting too burnt. How's it going, buddy? Every time. Nice box. How are you liking this new Chud box design? Oh, well, you know, I don't have the guns I used to. If you want to have a little bit lighter of a door, you just split her up like that. Hell yeah. Woo! Stop throwing our shoulders out when we're cooking pigs and pork steaks and whatnot. Yeah, right? Nice and clean, bud. Yeah, unlike me. I'd say. 35 minutes into this wing cook and these little bad boys are looking delicious. Nice and crispy, golden brown already. All that pepper is cooking down, sticking to there nicely. You can hear them sizzling. But now to add some extra flavor, we're gonna go in with some hot melted butter. Ooh, yes please. And because we're cooking at the same temperature that you'd be frying these wings at, they cook up pretty quick. Again, it's only been about 35, 40 minutes at this point and these are definitely fully cooked. We're just trying to add some nice flavor, make sure they're nice and juicy. And this is some butter that I brought up to a boil till all the water cooked out of it. And the hot oil mixed with the heat from the smoker is really gonna help get that skin nice and crispy. All the milk salts will kind of cook on and we'll end up with some super flavorful wings. This would also be a good time to go in with some brown butter if that's your style. <laughs> Never get sick of brushing butter on top of chicken wings. So we're just gonna let this butter kind of cook on, let these wings crisp up a little bit more, and then they'll be ready to pull off. Oh, you can't beat that. Look at that beautiful smoky wing. Alatot. Now that our wings are moments away from being done, it's time to talk about sauce. Today I'm gonna go with a few of my favorites, starting with the OG, the classic, the Frank's Red Hot Buffalo. We gotta love it. Big fan of buffalo wings. Secondly, I'm gonna go with some barbecue sauce. I do love a good barbecue wing, especially when it comes off the smoker. Going through my collection, I found some of this from the last wing video, the old Heat Week Leroy and Lewis beet barbecue sauce. Highly recommend giving this a try. We actually were just talking about Tuesday, whether or not we should bring this back and put it on the website. So let me know in the comments below if you guys want this uh, to make a resurgence. Boop. Just a nice spicy barbecue sauce. 
And then over here, I'm gonna make a little bit of a maple sriracha. Honey works really well too. But I'm gonna go in with some maple syrup and some sriracha. And you can make this to your own taste depending on what sweet to heat balance you prefer. I'm also gonna go in with a little dash of soy sauce just for some extra umami. And then a little bit of rice vinegar. Add some extra acidity and a little bit more flavor. Gonna whisk that up, give it a taste, and adjust it until we like it. Something about that sweet heat, can't go wrong. After about an hour on the smoker, these bad boys are done. Time to take them off the pit. And for those who keep a score at home, these are right around 200 degrees. Dark meat like chicken thighs and chicken wings can handle being cooked to higher temps without drying out or being tough or anything like that, but it's that really nice golden skin on there. And as you can see, they're not burnt or anything like that. The underside is looking nice and golden. Mmm, smells so good. But yeah, that's what you're looking for in a good smoked chicken wing. Nothing rubbery, nothing too dry. So off they come, and while they're still piping hot, let's toss them in our sauce. Boop, boop, boop. You know the drill from here, folks. Oh, so saucy. At this point, if you wanted to, you could throw these back on the smoker and let that sauce kind of glaze on a bit, but I kind of like a nice wet wing. All right, y'all, I think it's time to dive into these. I'm gonna start off with one of these maple sriracha ones. Put a little bit of uh, sesame seeds on there for a cute little garnish. Yoink. Beautiful. Ow. Mm-hmm. Mm. Nice and sweet, nice and smoky, good amount of heat to them. Delicious. Then we got the beautiful buffalo wing. The classic, the buffalo sauce. How? Um. Mm hmm. So tangy, so rich. Gotta love it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The beautiful Leroy and Lewis barbecue sauce. Spicy version. Great for wings. I dusted these with a little bit of barbecue rub too from Wright's Barbecue. Shout out Jordan. It's got a nice amount of sweetness to it, which should play nicely with the barbecue sauce. Um. Ooh, I forgot how spicy that sauce is. Nice and sweet, very peppery, very barbecuey. That's good. And then I kept a couple of dry guys too, just to admire the butteriness and the crispy skin that is achievable on an offset smoker. Can't go wrong with that. So good, just by itself. Very good. Maple and smoked wings goes so well together. Oh, I forgot about old Goliath over here. Biggest chicken wing in the world. Gotta bust out a little blue cheese for these buffalo wings. If you wanna learn how to make that, you can head over to the tallow fried chicken wing episode from a few months back. Make my own blue cheese dressing and show you how I like to make fried chicken wings, but sometimes a good smoky chicken wing hits the spot too. What's the most wings y'all have ever eaten in one setting? Let me know in the comments. I think my record's probably around like 30. No. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how I like to make smoked chicken wings. I highly recommend giving this technique a try, no matter what kind of cooker you have. As long as you're using high, indirect, clean heat, you can get some really crispy skin, juicy chicken wings. And the real beauty about throwing them on an offset like this is you can cook a big batch for a crowd a lot quicker than going batch for batch in a fryer or on a small grill or something like that. But if you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out so much. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see me cook next. If you cook these for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at chud. BBQ. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Head over to chudsbbq.com for all pit inquiries, wait lists, and all that good stuff. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace! Mmm!